What's up guys? Welcome back to Uncharted Florida. I'm Scott and I'm out of breath because we've just been doing some Pompano running right now. What a great day. We're out here in Brevard County at one of the beautiful beaches. It is an awesome looking day and we've had an action packed morning. So let's jump right in. Let's start at the beginning of the day. So we're trying to hit the beginning of that Pompano run here and really track it through the winter time. I've got a variety of baits. I got live sand fleas. I've got frozen sand fleas and some fish gum flavors to try out. Fish on. Fish on. All right. Here we go. Nice whiting. Nice whiting. Look at that. Real big whiting. What a great way to start the day. All right. I was lucky enough to find some live sand fleas out at the beach last night. So make sure you come out and try to get those sand fleas while they're here. And what you want to do is blanch them and put them in the freezer and you can use them all throughout the pompano season. I'll link a video at the end on just how to preserve those. What I'm fishing today is a triple rig. It's a triple dropper loop. One, two, and one up here. And what I like to do is try a variety of things with the floats. I've got an orangish pink float at the top, a little bit bigger, a little white and pink pill float in the middle, and no float on the bottom. And the other rod's got the same triple rig, but no floats. So we'll see exactly what happens today, what I recommend for these pompano. Doesn't feel like a pompano, maybe another whiting. Look, here. Look at this. Look at this. It actually is a pompano. It actually is a pompano. A very tiny pompano. Look at that juvenile pompano. Pretty colors. Very similar look to a Jack Crevel. When they're real young like this, they get a yellow tail. They'll always kind of keep that yellow belly though. Good hit on this rod. Hopefully this is a little bigger one. Yeah. Another good whiting. Big whiting. Look at that. I'll take those all day. Nice whiting. One trick when you're putting these frozen sand fleas on, I switched to frozen sand fleas because I ran out. Instead of going up through the bottom side, you want to flip it around and just wiggle that hook in through the top. You don't really want to force it out the bottom. You just want to leave it just like that. And that'll keep it on better. What a great way to start the day. Getting your feet wet in the sand. Beautiful sunrise. The water's a little calmer today than yesterday. And it's a little bit clearer too. This is the fish gum flavor we're using today. It's white shrimp. I've actually had a tough time getting this fish gum lately. So if you know somebody who sells this or you know where I can find this in Central Florida, drop a comment down below and let me know. But what I do is I just cut this into little strips. Just like that. You can go through the piece twice or you can cut it smaller and go through it once. Another thing that helps with these frozen fleas, they become a little bit more fragile. So you get a real light wire hook. It'll pass through a lot better. And this is what I was meaning earlier with. You just want to go right through the top, kind of wiggle it through and don't try to jam it all the way through. Just leave it kind of buried there. 
So when they're live, you come through the bottom like this, right through that pallet. And when they're frozen, you come through the top. All right, this rod just went slack. <clears throat> Usually when they go slack like that, something's grabbed it. Yep, we got something on here. It's always a good indicator when they go slack. All right, another big whiting. Look at this greedy fish. He ate the first bait, went down and ate the middle bait. Bottom bait's gone, I bet you he picked that clean. Look at that. We'll take these whiting, these are great eating. We usually make fish tacos out of these. On right away as soon as I casted that out I hit the water and the fish hit it I was just checking baits because if you go a few minutes without a hit something's not right oh there we go this one's got some good size to it when it's sideways that's good good size All right, that is what we're after. That is a big pompano. Check this out, guys. That is our target species. All right, nice pompano. This hit on the frozen fleas, tipped with fish gum, white shrimp flavor. This last cast out, well, I hadn't seen anything hit for quite a while, so I was checking the bait, casted it, went down to wash my hands, turned around, and that rod was bent over. Just needed to get in the sweet spot and that cast was farther out and we're at a high tide falling to low so that makes sense these predatory fish are hanging out on the outside of the bar so you want to get that cast way out there all right awesome fish we're going to get these rods back out there we're going to cast real far out this time you can see that pompano was real shiny silver that means it's that's a migratory fish that hasn't been in the indian river estuary when they get in that estuary they turn like a a deeper yellow color, almost like a gold bronze color. It's, it's noticeably different. There's two reasons that I recommend that triple rig that I showed you at the beginning of the video. One is with two poles, you've got six baits in the water. Fish three poles, you got nine, four, 12. You can see you get a lot more chances at strikes there. Stick around to the end of the video. I'm gonna show you a second reason why you wanna tie those triple rigs. It really helps with organizing your tackle. Another Pompano. All right. Beautiful second Pompano. All right, I think I might be on yet again. This line is completely slack. Oh yeah, we're on. We're on. These pompano are tricky because if you don't get pick up on that rod right away, it goes slack. When it goes slack, they can spit that hook. 
go. Another big whiting. Look at this beast. Look at this thing. Big whiting. Man, when those pompano hit, it is pure chaos. Just one rod to the other. You gotta be right on it. We just went completely flat. There we go, fish on. Feels a little smaller, but it could be swimming towards us. There we go. What do we have here? All right, another whiting. Nice one. These are great fish to fill your cooler with. They don't have a minimum size. This is about as small as I would keep them though, because much smaller than that, the filet is not too much. But that'll make a nice fish taco right there. There's actually no uh, bag limit on those whiting. Any unregulated species is a 100 pound limit. That would take you probably 100 fish, so you're pretty safe on the whiting. Usually I fish with five ounce pyramid sinkers, mostly because of the current here is usually pretty strong. What I think also helps is with those five ounce sinkers is when a fish grabs it, that's a lot of resistance and that'll help set that hook. I'm gonna show you a trick on how to store your triple rigs where they don't get tangled. What you wanna do is you wanna take the top two hooks and interlock them like this. Take your bottom hook, stick it on the uh, the truss to your bottom guide there and reel up. All your hooks are captured, then take your weight off so it doesn't swing around. All right, this is the proper way to fillet a pompano. What you want to do is you're going to take your knife and you're going to cut in a semicircle all the way around, straight through and around. You're going to find the soft part where it becomes soft. You can feel the head and then it becomes soft. You're going to cut right in. Gonna go around just like that and you're gonna remove the head now you're gonna trace around and fillet the fish just like you normally would Filet right there. I like to bring the fillet to the edge of the table so I can get my knife nice and flat under it. They've got real delicate skin so it's easy to accidentally cut through that when you're trying to get it off the skin. Nice perfect fillet. What a great day today.